Our Bible reading this morning is taken from the book of James. James chapter 2 and verse 14. Uh, yeah, verse 14 we're starting at. James chapter 2 starting at verse 14. And in my Bible it's entitled Faith and Deed. Now, just before I, I read that, I just want to um, just remind us that um, in a, a little while we'll be taking communion this morning, right? So um, um, we will be having communion. So if you're watching online and you want to join with us, then you can get some bread and some drink and you can join with us as we share um, in communion this morning. So that will be good. James chapter 2, verse 14. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, is if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds? Can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. You believe there is one God. Good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. You foolish person. Do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our father Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together. And his faith was made complete by what he did. And the scripture was fulfilled that says, Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. And he was called God's friend. You see that a person is considered righteous by what they do, and not by faith alone. In the same way, was not even Rahab the prostitute considered righteous for what she did when she gave lodging to the spies and sent them off in a different direction. As the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without deeds is dead. Father, we thank you for your word. And as we think of these words now, we just pray that you will be with us and give us understanding. And may we know your presence. Thank you, Lord. Amen. We're continuing to look through the book of James. And... and um, I think James is a great book. Um, we've talked about it before, but it gives us instruction on how we should be living our lives, not generally, but as Christians, as believers, as followers of God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And he gives us specific instruction on, on things like what we should be saying, what we should be listening to, and what we should be doing. He gives us a, a instruction on how we should be dealing with trials that we go through and temptations that we face. He tells us of how we should be dealing with favoritism. We should not have any favorites. God has no favorites. And this week... He comes and he talks to us about faith 
and deeds. And he asks a question. And I want to pose that question to you now. It's a simple question. I'm sure it's a question that we've asked in many, many con, um, many times in different situations that we've gone through. The question is, what good is it? What good is it? What good is it? What good is it, brothers and sisters? We can apply that in so many circumstances. And I'm sure we've done it. We've we've been working hard and we thought, why am I doing this? What good is it that I do all this? And I'm sure there are circumstances that you can think of where you can place yourself in that situation where you're asking, what good is it? Well, this morning... As James asks that question, he gives us the context that he's asking it in. And he says, what good is it if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? You know, we've just sung a song. We've just sung a song and the chorus that we sung says this, it said, We believe in God. I'm not going to sing it to you, so you're all right. We believe in God the Father. We believe in Jesus Christ. We believe in the Holy Spirit. And he's given us new life. We believe in the crucifixion. We believe that he conquered death. We believe in the resurrection. And he's coming back again. We believe. And as Christians, as people that are following God and are giving his life to him, as people who who know his word, sure that we believe those things. If anybody doesn't, come and see me afterwards. We'll have a chat. But we believe those things. We believe who God is, who Jesus is. But James asked the question, what is good is it to have faith in all this? To say, we believe all these things, we've got faith in God. What good is it? And he gives us the answer. It says, James says it should be good for other people. What good is it? That good thing should be good for other people. Other people. James tells us that if we are believing and have faith, then it will change our lives. We cannot believe and have faith and be the people that we were before we believed. And James looks at various elements of this, but he tells us, he says that... Even devils, even Satan believes all these things. He tells us that demons believe who God is and who Jesus is and the Holy Spirit. So if simply we believe, then what makes us any different? What makes us different is that our faith Our belief must change our actions. There must be something more than just saying, we believe. And what James is saying is that if all we do is just have faith without deeds, then our faith is dead. There's a very important point that I want to make here. And we need to understand. And that is that doing good does not make us Christians, does not save us. Doing good is not what makes us and gives us the confidence 
that we are going to spend eternity with our God. I speak to people who say, I don't need to go to church. I don't need to go and, and, and worship God for all that. I live a good life. I do good things. I spoke to my brother and he said, I do good. I don't need all this God stuff. He said, I'm living a good life and that's good enough. I give money to um, charity. I, I don't hurt anybody. I help people whenever I can. And that's great. It is great that people do that. It's great that people care and help each other and, and do good. But that's not going to get us any closer to God. That is not going to get us to that certainty that our God is loving and caring and helping us and that one day we're going to be able to go and he's going to say, come here because you, I love you and I know you. Doing good does not make us Christians or save us. In fact, Paul writes in um, the book of Ephesians, he writes, for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from ourselves. It is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do. What Paul is saying in these words is the same as what James is saying. Some people don't see that when they read it. They think that James is saying that we have to do good. And, and what Paul's saying is that it's not through good works. But they're actually saying the same thing. They're both saying the same thing. They're saying that when we have faith in God, when we realise what God has done for us, when we realise the free gift of mercy and grace that he's given us, his undeserved favour, his undeserved love, that he sent his son Jesus, the son, his only son that he loved, to suffer and die for us. When we realise what God has freely given us, then we will see a change in our lives. We will see that when we believe in all that Jesus did, in all that God has done for us, we will want to serve him. We will want to follow him. He clearly tells us we're not saved by works, but in Jesus Christ, we are created to do good works with his help. is what saves us. We're saved by our faith in God. When we call upon God, when we realise all that he has done, when we have faith and put our trust in him and ask him to forgive us for all the wrong things that we have done, that's what saves us. That's what washes us clean. That's what washes us and brings us back into that right relationship with God. And that's when the change takes place. Because we cannot, we cannot trust God. We cannot have faith in him, realising all that he has done without following the example of Jesus. Without looking to him. And without following the command that Jesus gave us. Jesus said we should love the Lord our God with all our heart and with all our mind and with all our soul, with everything that we have. And following on from that, we should love our neighbour as we would want to be loved 
ourselves. You see, when we come and know the love of God, it becomes less about I, but more about we and you. It becomes more about let's make sure other people are those in need are receiving what 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 they need and what I can do to help. James gives us an example of that. He says, suppose a man, sorry, he says that suppose a brother or sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to him, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed. But does nothing about his physical needs. What good is it? What good is it if we do not show love to each other? If we're not helping and caring for one another? What good is it? James gives us two examples of faith in action. And that's what we're talking about here. We're talking about having faith. But faith must be an action. It must lead to our action. It must lead to a change in our life, a change in our thinking. It tells us about Abraham. God made Abraham a promise that through him there will be a great nation, a great number of people. And at the time, Abraham had no children. But then he had a child by his wife, Sarah. And they called him Isaac. And God asked Abraham to take his son and sacrifice him on an altar. How hard that would have been. And yet Abraham trusted God and was willing to do it. But God stopped him. Uh, I, I, I think just at, you know, just at the last minute, God said, stop what you're doing. Abraham, you were willing to trust me. And now I'm going to really bless you. You see, Abraham had faith and trusted in God, but it called for action. And he tells us also about um, um, a lady who was a prostitute living in Jericho. When, when spies came into Jericho to spy out the city and find out what was going on, they were seen and they were, they were in trouble, but Rahab, the prostitute, helped them she hid them and sent them away in an opposite direction. Saved them because she knew that God was the God who was going to give his people the victory. But she didn't stop and run away. She had faith and her action saved those spies and helped them. And it's through their action that these people are commended for their faith. As Christians, we have faith in God and we believe all that he has done for us in saving us through the death and the resurrection of Jesus. The true test of our faith is when we trust God and step out in faith. Allowing our actions to do good to others and demonstrating God's love through care and help for each other and for other people. Our faith must be an action and must be seen by the actions that we take we need to trust God and we need to step out in our faith as he calls us, as he leads us. Our faith 
in God, the great big God that we have, must lead to us. Following him and taking action, helping others, listening to God's leading and doing all that he asks. And I can tell you that when we step out in faith, then God is able to come and will be with us and will be alongside us, helping, strengthening, providing and doing all that we need and giving all that we need to help us. And there's many examples in our church and in people's lives here of how stepping out in faith allows God to work through them. Let's let our faith drive our action. What good is it? It's to the good of those around us that our faith leads us to do good and to love our neighbours as ourselves. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word and all that it teaches us. And as we think about these words from James, what good is it that we have faith in you, Father? Well, it is to the good of all those that we are able to help. It is the good of all those that you lead us to. Father, let it be that our faith leads to the actions you want us to take. Help us, lead us and guide us, Lord, we pray. Father, what good is it? It's because of your goodness and for your good that we are led by you. Help us, Father, we pray in Jesus' name.